Hello. 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 So thank you for coming to this discussion. I am Kelly Cowling. I'm the executive director of Grey Havens Philosophy. Grey Havens Philosophy is a Longmont-based nonprofit. We're a P4C organization, letter P, number four, letter C. And what that stands for is philosophy for children and community. So this is the first in our series of philosophy and COVID-19 discussions, where we're going to look at the philosophical aspects of life during this pandemic. And we do philosophy discussions with children as young as three. Um, in fact, we're, our, we do, we're doing books and big ideas story times online every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. We're reading books like Why and Hey Little Ant that Oh, that does interesting things with my green screen. <laughs> and we're, um, they get kids thinking and talking about the big ideas of philosophy. And the idea is that everybody is a natural philosopher, including children. Um, just think how often kids ask why. And questioning is sort of the, the intuitive way that they make sense of their world. And we want people not to lose that. We want people to think creatively and critically and collaboratively and in a caring way. And in fact, that's the four things that we're gonna ask you to do in this discussion. So thinking creatively means putting ideas together in a different way, doing thought experiments, using your imagination, asking what if. Uh, thinking critically means being committed to not only saying what you think, but why you think it. And being committed to giving good reasons, your best reasons for why you think it, and also being willing to have your thinking challenged by others and being open to having your mind changed, which is so important in philosophy and in life. And then thinking in a caring way just means caring enough to challenge people's ideas. So there are two things you can do when someone states a premise. And a premise is a statement um, after which something logically follows. So you can either support that premise with your own ideas and your own evidence, or you can challenge it. You can challenge the thinking or the evidence or the ideas themselves. Um, and it also means just giving people a chance to, to say what they think, validating their experiences. Um, not saying, well, I haven't experienced that, so your experiences are not valid. And, and also just you know, making eye contact as best we can over Zoom and um, being aware of your body language. So it's so easy when somebody says something to roll your eyes or give an exasperated sigh or sink down in your chair, but that shuts people down. So can we all agree to do that four C's? Creative, critical, caring, collaborative. Yay, okay. And before we started recording, we talked about Zoom etiquette. So I think we're good to go. Let's do some philosophy. All right. And so the first thing I want to ask is what your experiences have been like since you first heard of COVID-19 and, and how, that, how your life has changed over time since you first heard of coronavirus or COVID-19. <laughs> it's been a really interesting ride. Um, in part because it's like the first time I'd actually, like when I was hearing about it, um, I don't remember when I first heard about it, but I, when I realized that like other people were paying attention or just like knowing about it mm -hmm. was when, um, when I was at work, I work as a library page. Um, so while I'm shelving, I just overhear people's conversations. And like each time I was out there, I heard it mentioned between people once or twice, just people talking about like, oh, well, I don't know what I'm going to go to my travel plans and people like, getting just the progress of, of how we talk about it and what we learn um because there were people like oh well you know only like the elderly and compromise go you know, get it so like i we, we were probably not going to cancel on that thing um and then hearing co-workers are talking about they're like i don't know how long this is going to last like that was like a week later and they're like ah, i think my plans are going to get canceled i don't know um to when we finally were closing because uh yeah <laughs> it was a serious thing that now it affected us and we're like all right so now it's been interesting just being at home and dealing with all the feelings. <laughs> uh, library workers, I mean, I know libraries are closed right now, but up until they were, library workers are on the front line of so many, front lines of so many things, like the opioid crisis. 
Um, you know, there are lots of library workers who have training in how to deal with overdoses. And it's just um, amazing to me, everything that library workers do. But anybody else, um, what, do you, what have your experiences been like? Well, my, my employer sent us all to work from home. So we've been working from home and I've been training someone for basically the whole time we've been at home. So I'm getting a lot of people time, more than I w would like sometimes. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and a lot of on, you know, it's not just people, but I'm on and I'm asking questions and the whole time. So that's been interesting. And to people hearing people, oh, I have all this free time and, da, da, da. and I'm like, thinking, I don't have any free time. And, yeah. and and some of my other social things have all moved to Zoom or online, so I'm doing more of those kinds of things too, that I wouldn't have necessarily been able to get to, in in if I had to drive there and go. Mm -hmm. So. Um, yeah, I'm an introvert, so I find it a little bit easier to do Zoom, but also just sort of vulnerable because I'm being myself and I. Don't necessarily like seeing myself and just it's it's just nerve-wracking um i i think rebecca might be having some technical difficulties so we can um, um go ahead and and if, if rebecca wants to share her experiences you know i can say it's been weird <laughs> it's just been surreal i hear that word a lot and i was deciding about travel plans so my dad and my grandma died about um six months ago. And I've been traveling back and forth um, to Texas a lot where my mom is. And I was going to help her um, go through my dad and my grandma's stuff. And it, it felt like that. So I, I traveled to Atlanta for a conference and a meeting at the end of February. And I got home and I immediately scheduled more travel and another conference. And then it felt like right after that, the world changed but it was right on the cusp of everything changing that I flew to Texas. And so I was, I ended up um, doubling my stay there and then finally having to just rent a car and get home with as little human contact as possible, which was a, an amazing experience. And then I get home and you know, it's about adapting everything that we do to being online and just, and then, you know, it's like, everybody's doing Zoom. And then it's like, well, no, the FBI says that you can get Zoom bombed. And like, everything changes every day. And I'm finding that kind of exhausting. Like, oh, but one thing I do love is that every discussion that we've had has involved pets. <laughs> it's so good to see doggies. <laughs> I've seen dogs and cats and birds, and that's awesome. There's also been lots of glasses of wine. <laughs> More than usual in philosophy discussions. So Rebecca, do you want to share a little bit of what life has been like for you? Well, it's very similar, I think, to your the experiences you guys described. You know, it it sort of first seemed very distant in China, and then. Um, you know, you start here, then Washington State was the first feeling like it's getting closer. And um, then my mother is 92 and she's in a, um, you know, nursing home essentially or Alzheimer's care place. And mm -hmm. so then I was pretty concerned and decided I wasn't going to visit her, but she has, she's pretty good with Skype. So that was kind of hard though because you know you just don't know what's going to happen but they they seem to the home seem to do a pretty good job with shutting down visiting and taking everybody's temperatures and supporting the skype sessions so i was happy with that and then my kids were um had to stop school i have teenagers um 
And so I just think, I think for the first like week and a half, I kind of felt like it was good. It was kind of fun, you know, almost. And, uh -huh. and then now it's feeling just um, a little, I feel kind of a little bit in limbo, you know, it's, um, it's not as fun as it was at first, I guess. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, of course, I feel a little ashamed talking that way because, of course, there are people who are fighting for their lives and fighting for family members' lives, and I've, I'm fortunate not to have been in that spot yet. So. But it sounds like um, having your mom in a nursing home is a tough thing. I mean, even though there are Skype sessions, and I know we've all been separated from people we love, but I'm really interested in, in what you said about it being fun because I'm an introvert and I, I, in spite of the fact that I said this is kind of exhausting, there's some things about it that are fun for me and that are, <laughs> that, you know what, pet background noise is always welcome. <laughs> I, just, I, I love dogs so much. Um, but there have been things that are fun for me. And, you know, I have like with, with groceries, I've just made sure that I did, I ordered some things that were like, you know, extra fun, like a nice body wash and some chocolate. And, um, it, it, one of the things that comes up in our philosophy discussion is like, is the concept of, of pleasure and, um and and what role pleasure should play in our life and especially like is it okay to seek pleasure while others are suffering so what do you what do you think about that like what do you feel instinctively and emotionally and then irrationally what what do you think about that well i think <clears throat> for me personally I, I i feel a little there's a little bit of guilt at first, but then, um, you know, I, I, I tend to think of guilt as kind of a, not really the most useful emotion. Um, I guess it can make you think, you know, can take, uh, give something more thought maybe. Um, so I think as long as you're, supporting you know the community's goals or you know you're doing something to help um the situation as in this case simply taking the uh re drastically reducing your social circles seriously and like with my teenage son i have to you know i pry and ask him okay so did you you know how did you keep your distance and stuff to try to because he's 17, soon to be 18, so it's really just, you know, my work is pretty much done. I just have to yeah. try to correct. <laughs> and uh, so I guess I think that we should enjoy what we can in life um, as long as we're, you know, meeting our obligations that we are aware of. I think that's all we can do. Yeah. Yeah, I was really thinking like, you know, when I first, I, I'm working from home too, some, and at first it was just, I felt like, okay, good, you know, I've got this time, we're gonna get some projects done and that'll be great. And then, I don't know, it's like, I woke up one morning and I was just like, you know what? What if this is my last week on our on on the planet? You know, who knows at this point, right? And I was just like, you know, I should enjoy the day too. It's like I should appreciate what there is to appreciate. And so I've been really being trying to be more cognizant of that and just, you know, getting outside and enjoying the weather and you know, and just and just appreciating what I do have because I know that a lot of people do, are really suffering right now. I mean, for for various reasons, you know, sometimes it's just economic, but it's like that's a big deal and it's very stressful so i i'm super appreciative that it you know at least for the time being you know we're fine my family is fine and you know like i've been missing my parents because i don't i just don't feel like i can go see them i just i can't take the chance but but you know what i can appreciate you know i can still talk to them and um we're still be able to you know to to talk to our friends and 
and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But but I think at first everybody was so busy, busy, you know, like, and I, that's what I feel is happening this week. Yeah. This is kind of week four for us anyway. And it's, four. <laughs> and it's like, I feel like, all week four. Time, like, there's like no work being done. Like all, all my emails are people posting pet pictures, plant pictures, vacation <laughs> pictures. <laughs> we need that. I, exactly. Like, yeah, like I, I wasn't even minding the like the first week to like the kind of build up before that because it was kind of this chaos, this major chaos time of when right. this was first happening, and I felt like I could actually flow with that easier and kind of just be like, you know, this is happening. I know what I have to do, which is just you know wash my hands or touch my face and so that last day of work where everyone was in the library getting their their book supplies which was a hilarious thing because we didn't know how long this would last then like it was kind of like the beginning part we were in the naivety that it would just be right, like two weeks, weeks. Like, literally it'd be two weeks um and so we were like oh everyone just getting their giant stacks of books <laughs> and now I'm just like no everybody knew <laughs> and for that time of the major chaos I feel like I actually was doing like better and then week two yeah. it was just really up and down and three was leveling out and getting bored and four is just kind of bored but you know I'm like I'm thankful that it's just boredom I'm dealing with like out of mm -hmm. everything I'm like that's fine you know I'm hearing so much philosophy in what you're saying and so many things that philosophers have said in the past like I mean just like memento mori like remember death and like that that um that gives like zest and presence and um, you know, and maybe even intensity, uh, or it just makes you appreciate the life that you have right now. And then like there's, you know, people think that Epicurean philosophers were like hedonists. Like when you say like Epicurean, people think of like, oh, gourmet food, you know, shut kiss, whatever. Um, but actually they were about appreciating what you have like the uh, having your basic needs met and just really um that that was where that was where all pleasure and that all, and all happiness came from and even if you don't have your basic needs met you can remember a time when you did and um i want to hear um from from you Lizel, too but i i and i want to throw the other question out there like um how do you think do you think that this is going that this kind of appreciation that we have now for like oh it's so great to be able to just sit down on the couch and eat some chocolate and, and watch this movie and not take it for granted do you think that's going to continue do you think that'll um that'll last after this is over or do you think people are so adaptable that once where things are uh, we're, we're not social distancing anymore that we'll just forget all about it and and take things for granted again. Thoughts? I think that when when in, we're able to go at it more, people will get out and, and the time will disappear. All that extra time we have mm. will be refilled with other things again. So. Yeah. So, so I lead a team at work and I've been We've been meeting every morning for about a half an hour and we just chat chit chat basically just to kind of reconnect with each other and i hit today i heard a lot of how long do you think this will last every that seemed to be on everyone's mind so how long do you think it'll last i mean i'm asking all of you i'm i'm hearing like at least I don't know, I'm hearing things like like we've canceled all our programs through um, through May, so I mean they're already that it's just sort of looking forward and just thinking that we may not open till June, mm. which I know it's hard for me to believe because I'm just like at first you know yeah ours was well I think at first ours it was four weeks I did say four weeks but mm -hmm. you know that would have been the end of this week which is obviously not going to happen so. And even that, I thought, wow, that's a long time. Right. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I think everybody's getting a little stir crazy, but I really feel like it'll be the end of May. Mm. I, I think thought. the, I've heard the end of May or maybe even June. Um, you know, I think it'll be a little bit like you know, the Great Depression, people that who lived through hardship at that time. Um, 
talked about how that situation affected them for the rest of their lives you know, and mm -hmm. psychologically and the, the scarcity and but do you so think I, I suspect there will be will be a, the generation that had this you know experience and we don't know how um, short or long it's going to be because it could be these two to three months and then it could have to happen again if we aren't able to manage the, you know, get the right testing and contact tracing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it could be, you know, more than just a few months. I, I kind of feel like towards the end of May, beginning of June, things will relax a little bit. But I think they'll still be a, you know, try to keep your distance, but we can start opening things again. And and then I think you're right. I think it's going to come back in the fall. Mm. Well, I think it depends on if we are able to get the test to see who's been exposed and who has immunity and who hasn't. And then we have to be able to, you know, protect certain people, vulnerable people that haven't been exposed. So that. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm hearing uncertainty. And um, what I'm wondering is like how you live with uncertainty. <laughs> Not well. <laughs> yeah, 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 me, me too. <laughs> I think we're getting better at it already. Yeah. I mean, just for us, it's like, we're, I just feel like I'm, we're, we've been so blessed, like just for food. We're, Alex and I were talking about this, just how, you know, I never really had to think about it, you know, and what a blessing, you know, I've, our grocery is so close. We just run out to the grocery every other day and <laughs> go grab a few things. And so now we're really having to think about it and like, and like oh, where could we, where could we find this or where might we find that? Or just what do we do with the ingredients we have? Oh, what like, do we, how do we make this stretch? Right. And how, and we've been really good about like not um, throwing away food. Like we've been eating everything we have, mm -hmm. like, keeping really good track of it. Um, so that's been a different experience. I guess that's one way that we we're, we're dealing with uncertainty is just by planning as much as we can. Yeah. Planning for what you can plan for. Cause so some of this is, is very odd to me is how, we have a lot of experts in everyone that tells you like, well, you should come up with like a really strict routine and then follow a plan and, and make that through. And I feel like I haven't been able to make any kind of plans because I just feel like since there's new information every day that I can't relax into a plan. And mm -hmm. then it's just like, what's the point in planning if I just had to keep redoing it and using all my brain power to replan a new plan? <laughs> I'm at the point where I'm trying to take it day by day with just whatever comes through to do and to try and sit uncertainty a little bit and not push it away. So I know for me that if I just ignore how uncomfortable and fearful I'm getting that it makes it so much worse and I'm like all right we're gonna journal for a long time and release a lot of stress and realize what some triggers are and work on that. Oh I bet it will be so fascinating to go back years from now and and read your journals and for, for your kids to read your journals if you have kids and I yeah other thoughts on uncertainty? Well, I think that this kind of situation just makes you aware of uncertainty because it really is. Uh, life is very uncertain. Is uncertain. I mean, there, I guess there's some uncertainty all the time, but we're not always aware of it. Mm -hmm. or we don't always think about it. Is it, does it feel like we're giving up even the illusion of control <laughs> over our lives? <laughs> and it strikes me, you know, you hear a lot, we all pay lip service, I think, to being present in the moment, but it strikes me that one of the ways that we make meaning out of our lives is um, by our past, like who we were and who we think we are now and who we intend to become. So how is this, is this, is this, um, changing like 
what your life means to you, like the meaning of your life and, and how you're making meaning out of your, your own personal history and your um, ambition. Well, I'm, I feel like I'm getting something I feel like I really wanted, which is less busyness. Um, you know, but at the same time, it's, you know, is, is somewhat uncomfortable, <laughs> but, you know, even like having my children right now, they're with their dad, but they're with me most of the time. And, you know, they're my, especially my son is kind of pretty vocal about his being tired of hanging out with family, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's <laughs> everything when you're a teenager. They're everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, so I think just because there's less to distract ourselves with, you know, I, there's not, you know, I, I don't have the commute to work because I'm working mm -hmm. from home. I also don't have the commute. I do meditation on Tuesday evenings and that's now by Zoom also. So there's like, uh, and then there's the time with my children, which, you know, some of it is, is special and then some of it is a little trying, you know, and, mm -hmm. and just like time with myself that I have, you know, sometimes I'm starting to feel kind of like, you know, you know, like lost, a, feel, a little bit of a feeling of being lost. Um, so, so I'm trying to balance, you know, kind of journaling with that and feeling that. And then I do do a little bit of escape. I have done some Netflix binge watching and uh, slept in, took a couple naps. <laughs> Good for <laughs> you. To... <laughs> and what? Oh, it took, you know, took a bath in the middle of the day, <laughs> you know, which I often on Sundays is something I, I like to do sometimes. I want to quote a Smith song, like every day is like Sunday now. <laughs> 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 it is. I mean, so I'm hearing a lot about how time feels different and I, I'm having that experience. Like I was, I, I was planning things that we are, are as an organization, Great Havens Philosophy's first response to this was to just start planning things. You know, we canceled everything that was in person and we started planning online discussions. And then so many dates have crept up on me because time just feels different. I, I don't even, I'm not going to say it doesn't feel real. Like I, I'm aware of time passing, but in a different way, I, it, it's hard to remember what day it is. And I just think, wow, I, I suggested, I said I would do that five days ago and I haven't gotten to it yet, but it feels like I've been really busy and it, it is. So I, I'm, I'm curious, like if this is, if you're having a similar experience and also if this is this is a huge question but is this changing or giving you different thoughts on the nature of time itself <laughs> you know that's the kind of like i'm alex and deborah laughing but you're regulars you know that's the kind of question i ask <laughs> what is time so speaking oh. of time i have to go because we have another thing this later this evening and I need to get us all dinner before then. So um, I'm gonna drop and you guys have fun and I will catch up with you the next time. All right. It'll be good to see you next time. It was good to see you this time too. Yep. Okay. Okay. See you later. Bye. 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 No, I think okay. about time is so interesting because it just feels like, yeah, what is it about the time? Because I have a really long drive to work and back and so I should have gained like, Two hours. Like two hours a day, so like eight hours per week at least. Yeah. 
and then just the time that we've you know we usually spend driving around so i should have like all this extra time and even though i am like working from home so you know i am doing some 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 work here but i don't have to to drive and it just feels like i don't get nearly as much done <laughs> so i don't know what is it about that time that's a, such an interesting question it's yeah, I mean, I haven't been able to keep track of what day it is. Like, I think I've right. been either ahead or behind a day, like, all last week. It feels a little more stable today. Like, I haven't felt nearly as, like, wonky this today. Yeah. But for the past week, I was like, I don't know what day it is. I don't know. Yes. I, don't know what the, I don't know what time it is. <laughs> but um, some of it was just, I, I was reading an article that was talking about how um, part of it, the reason that we don't have more time is because we literally don't actually have more time. And that either it's because we're like working from home, so that's taking up the time, but just like the the energy of being at home and the energy of like knowing everything that's happening and like keeping mm -hmm. up with things, that's like taking up the same amount of time that everything mm -hmm. else would have. So it's not that we actually have more time, we literally are using it in just different ways. And a lot of that stress takes up all your energy too. So that just like takes out some of your time as well. And I'm like, you know it's okay to give yourself permission if you're not getting things done because there's literally not that much extra time, I feel. That makes a lot of sense. And I think especially for people that have kids at home, like which, um, you know, I don't mm -hmm. have kids anymore, but, you know, they're doing like schooling at home and that's like, that's a lot of extra for them anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely taking up some people's time. I want to ask questions about schooling at home, but I want to stick with the time subject just a little bit longer because, you know, one of the questions that that philosophy asks is if time is its own thing, like does time just exist in us and our perception of how things pass, or is it a fundamental quality of, of the cosmos, like is time real, or is time something that we've made up or something that we impose on our um, experiences or it, it just happens to be the way that our minds are made that we experience things as happening sequentially so I, I mean what it so what do you think about that question especially given this experience that we're all having of experience of um, experiencing time differently I've used the word experience a lot <laughs> in that sentence what do you think I always feel like time, I, mean, I have no way to prove any of this, but I just, I feel like time is just your experience of your life because, <laughs> because it's, uh, you know, like if you're really, really involved in something, like something that you love to do, you know, you get very focused. It's like, sometimes you look up, you know, and it's like three or four hours later and you're like, oh my gosh, where did the time go? But then, you know, other times your experiences you know, where it's really, really slow and you keep looking at the clock going, really, two minutes just passed, that's it. <laughs> you know, if, you're, if you don't want to do something especially, but so it does feel experiential, like it's, yeah. you know, a real thing. Yeah, do you yeah. actually experience time in a like linear fashion, almost like we're like just this right. kind of like straight and narrow. I'll just go back to Dr. Doom, like, wibbly wobbly, Tommy Wanny. <laughs> That's the Whovian's answer to every question about time. <laughs> answer. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it, it's sort of tempting to, to think time is, is relative from the intellectual standpoint, mm -hmm. but in reality, you know, we have a limited amount of daylight and then it's a new day, you know, we have nighttime and there are seasons and so, Time is really built into life on Earth, I think. Maybe, maybe I am imposing that idea of time on those things, but I mean, it is. You, you know, and I, I can't, can't, oh, sorry. Yeah. No, no I can't, you can't just check out of time, you know, I mean, you can, right. you can sometimes slow it down down a little bit through mm -hmm. focus and and like meditation and and things but but not you know in a extreme sense just i think in small yeah. 
stretches. Anyway, that's what I have to say. <laughs> yeah, and I like what you're saying about that because I think it's really like, um, I really enjoy like the cycles, like the cycles, because that does sort of give you some way to, to mark your, your place, your, sort of your place in the world. And I, I love like, like living here because there's, there's um, you know, seasons. And so there, there are those, you know, those cycles, those rituals, those kind of things. And yeah, if, if we didn't have like night and day, it'd be weird, right? It would just be like, I, I mean, well, you know, we came here and we're here for that, but it's a, we do just kind of mark our, mark our time that way. Yeah, you know, I can't, I can't speak to it from um, a physicist point of view, like either from Newton or Einstein. Um, I, you know, I do think in, in some sense, it's like if my hand is cold and I plunge it into a bucket of hot water, that water's not going to feel as hot as if my hand were warm to begin with, but the thermometer will read the same. Mm -hmm. However, I don't, I think maybe that could be like a reductive uh, way of looking at it. So. I, I am hearing the suggestion, tell me if I'm right, that time is change or that change mm -hmm. is an aspect. Would there be time without change? I don't think so. Do you think that there is an unchanging aspect of being or reality? I certainly think that if our um, our first premise of, of if no, if there's no change, then there's uh, not time. I'm like, it does seem kind of reductive at the least. That if nothing changes, then in time not existing, I'm like that just seems like a, just a reductive way to exist in the sense where it's just like nothing changes, and it's just the same. I'm like, but uh, yeah, just so it kind of makes me think that it's like yeah, time is an intrinsic part of living in some manner. I can't imagine no change. Like, just, I can't conjure that, like, what that would be like. I don't know if there would be perception without change. Right. Or if we would be separate from each other, I don't know if there would be anything. Like, <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's a really good answer to a, a philosophical question. Like, eh, I don't know. You know, nobody knows. We don't know. We're still <laughs> philosophy is infinite. We're all gonna we're gonna keep asking these questions. Rebecca, did you have something? Yeah, I was just going to say that because we've been doing less and essentially experiencing less change in some sense some of us now obviously people who are getting ill or going to the hospital they are experiencing more change but people who are just not driving to work and reducing your trips to the grocery store and your main outing is you know walking your dog you know mm -hmm. and um in the same area you know then change is slowed down and then time does seem to be slowed down i would say yeah yeah good question. i mean i guess time has changed even in the sense of of measuring time because we measure time by the change on the clock or i don't know how atomic clocks work but i'm sure there's some change or decay or something involved I am so revealing myself as a humanities and not a STEM person. <laughs> not that philosophy is not good for STEM. It's actually really good and it's an important part of it. Um, mm -hmm. It should be for STEM. Uh, so, okay. Um, so let's go from the metaphysical like back to the more practical and the sort of social and political and talk mm -hmm. about what is going on with school right now. Um, we have young adult groups and um, like we have a group for sixth through 12th graders and we recorded a conversation with them recently. And one of the things that we talked about a lot was school and the fact that they're having to do online school and what that's like for them. And at that point they hadn't started, but as of 
um, our last discussion with them, which was last Saturday, they had, mm -hmm. and they were all a little, uh, <laughs> and I'm sure their parents are all a little, and I'm sure their teachers are like, <laughs> Or maybe not, because I'm sure the teachers are having to produce content and teach classes, and um, it's never easy to be a teacher. Um, but I'm just curious, like, um, from a point of view, the point of view of what's best for society, how important do you think school is right now? I mean, I, think I don't mean education. I mean school. I'm I mean, sorry. I think the, the, the structure of it might be helpful to an extent that it gives you something to be like kind of hold on to in a concrete way that it's like, okay, we're doing this for this time. Um, but if it's still the same amount of time that you would normally be in school, I think it has the same problem, which is that I think the amount of time that's spent in school for kids is a bit too long anyways to actually be the best way to learn. So on that level, I'm like, it's probably got some about some goods and bads that are like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so why do you think it's too long? I mean, just for practical studies of like how humans learn that we only actually can get a productive amount of information in like six hours at the most. And after that, your brain just can't process anything else really. And so it's just kind of like, it's a lot. So I think sometimes schools are, I don't blame schools. You know, we're, there's a lot, a lot to, we're trying to teach kids. We have a lot of systems that we can't really just change as so much. And so it's part of that. But mm -hmm. some of it, I think, is just, yeah, that it's just trying to pack in too much into the time that they have. And then doing, because it's that every day, and then going home, and you still have to do, like, more homework. And it's like, and then there's after school programs for other things. And so it's just filling your time all the time with things happening. Yeah. So... My kids are now, um, they are still just doing their core classes and it's just like three to four hours a day of class and they're not even in a WebEx or something for the full hour generally. But so in a way that balance is working well for my daughter. She's more of an introvert, but she's also a good student. So she's kind of likes this a little bit, you know, at this point. She misses not having track after school. So that physical outlet. Mm -hmm. But um, my son's highly social, so he's really missing, you know, actually seeing people more. Um, I'm kind of happy with the way the school district is kind of taking the academics a little bit lightly, um, saying, you know, whatever you were at before, you can work to get your grade up, but you'll kind of stay, at, as long as you participate, you'll kind of stay at that level. And I, I think that's the right choice in this situation, just because I don't think it's realistic to, you know, really be able to switch make this big of a switch and mm -hmm. uh, kind of up the ante or keep it that intense so but i so i think it's kind of a nice balance right now it takes about they've got an hour and a half for lunch which is more than usual and then they got one class after that and three before if they have you know first period and so um so I think it's, I think they've done a good job at this point. Okay. I think it's interesting just um, the whole, like just the structures that have had to change. And then it, I think it's going to be interesting, like maybe, you know, after we get through COVID, it's just like what will stay and what won't stay. Because I think, you know, it's all like pointing out what's working, what's not working and, and just po other possibilities that we hadn't really considered. And so I, th I think that will be super interesting just to see like, you know, because like, like you said, like for, for your daughter, who's introverted is like, I would have loved a school like that. <laughs> Personally, I would love just to do some online classes like four or five hours and then just had, you know, gotten to do whatever I wanted to do after that, you know, whatever my own interests were then. Um, but I, but I do know, and Alex knows, you know, people who really loved school because they were so social and it's like, 
because that's that's a really huge part for some people mm -hmm. you know it's like even probably even more than any of the classes it's like that is the the draw so and that's important if that's that if you're that kind of person so so for them it, it wouldn't be good then just to do online mm -hmm. even if it could be you know just done that way so i don't know i'm just really i am really curious like as to what will be the the fallout from everything mm -hmm. in the end just because we are already trying different things because we have to now but yeah. like oh, what will it be like later yeah that's yeah, a really think, good question oh sorry oh i was just gonna say i think that you know certain people will do better in these circumstances obviously just like mm -hmm. certain types of people do better in regular school and some certain types of people do better in online type situation and and then i think the interesting thing will be once we get back to some type of you know ability to be with other people be social um you know what parts of online uh mm. how we spent time online will we want to continue right i know we'll want to keep doing online philosophy discussions because i think it's um it's important for accessibility because people who have um chronic illness or you know certain disabilities um don't always want to do in-person discussions i have tourette syndrome and um i find myself taking less when I'm doing an online discussion, mostly because I can like sit here and like tear up post-it notes and destroy little things and have fidget and objects more than I can when I'm like facilitating a discussion in person. So I think it's important, but I'm just really interested in everything that you all said. Cause I, I also think that there's something to be said about having a, a, a social safety net because I, I know that incidents of domestic violence and child abuse are way up because people are in their home, which is just being overcrowded and being um, stuck together all the time. That's a risk factor for all of those things. But it's probably, there's a lot of things that we aren't catching because we're not going out into the world and sending our children out into the world. But I'm also really interested in what you said, Alex, about how like you don't blame school because it's hard for society to change its structures, that there are reasons, um, historical reasons that school takes place over the uh, period of time that it does. You know, even if research shows that kids will do better if they start later, there are all of these um, societal and historical reasons. And then, like Deb, you asked, like, what are we gonna, like, what's gonna change? What's gonna be lasting change? And what, um, and Rebecca, you asked, like, what kind of things uh, of online life are you going to want? We're going to want to continue, and maybe it takes something like this that is apocalyptic in the sense, not in the doom and gloom sense, but in the sense that it just sort of changes everything. So, or almost everything, a lot of things. Maybe it takes something like that to have us take a look at what actually works and what doesn't work. So that's my question is, do you think this is enough to um, actually affect societal change? I don't see anything, if everything kind of goes to non-COVID living, um, is going to be changed um, inherently quickly, but only because I think there's a lot of structures in place that are set up that really want to go back to the way we've been living. Yeah. But I think if anything that's been great that's come out of this is that it's really shown that people can change really quickly. Kind of the argument for a lot of our societal like things that we kind of suggest like, well, maybe if we did this differently and things would like change, it would be better, it may, might work better and how people are like, well, we just can't like stop doing what we're doing and, like, and just go over to this new system. And I'm like, and now, now it's like, but maybe we can. Yeah. We can just try something new and see how it happens because a lot of our structures are just kind of set up in this, Oh no, we can never change it. It'll all break down if we change it. And it's like, well, now we're breaking everything down and it's changing. So maybe that's just the way it should go. Yeah. Other thoughts on that? 
So well, why do you I'm think? Planning, uh, I'm planning. Up... <laughs> no, go on. <laughs> oh, I am. <laughs> Did you want to ask a question? No, I want to hear what you have to say first. Okay, I was just going to say that I'm planning a Zoom party this coming um, weekend, and you know, I was planning to have like an in-person party. That was my plan, but. Now I am thinking that when I have other parties that I might want to have a Zoom option for, you know, people oh, yeah. to be able to join. So kind of like you're saying with the philosophy discussions, you know, you will want to always have that. And I, I did an online yoga class that was not just a recording, but was actually live, you know, mm -hmm. and that was really cool too. That sounds really cool. And you said you do meditation online? Mm-hmm. That also sounds really cool. I would be less afraid to start something new if it were not in person, but then I understand that it's scarier for other people. So I wonder if, um, this is actually a different question than I was originally gonna ask, and that's what I love about these discussions is you never know where they're gonna go. Like, um, so, now I just forgot what I was gonna ask. Oh, yes, I know. Um, how adaptable do you think society can be and why do you think it hasn't it's been so slow to adapt and then um just how like like i'm thinking about um employers who said that they couldn't do work from home options as um an, an ada adaptation and accessibility adaptation and i think they're going to have a harder time using that um excuse now you know saying that it's too difficult or that it your job can't be done this way but in in general like in american society like what historically why do you think we haven't been very adaptable do you think it's something in human nature or do you think it's something inherent in our society or both i had some distractions here so you were saying um, that what it, in our society, why is our society not very adaptable, mm -hmm. like to online type? Or any, any change. Mm -hmm. I think it's really just easier to, to go with the status quo because, I mean, it's sort of like, I think our discussion of time, it's like, because it's just easier to go into the flow of whatever you have set up. Mm -hmm. And so, unless it's something really that really starts to bother you in some way. Um, and even personally, we don't usually change until something hurts. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pain point. Um, and so I, I think our society is a little bit like that too, where it's just like, well, you know, this it's mostly working, you know, things are mostly working for, you know, most of the people. It goes mildly uncomfortable yeah, to getting so a little more like, unignorable right and so i just i don't know that is just human nature i don't know but it does seem like it does seem like that is the way that change happens is that it takes it takes something for us to to change either to just to really shove it in our faces or some really big pain before we'll just stop and and i think partly it's just people are really busy like you know we are like a busy society that is kind yeah. of our benchmark, especially here in the US, where it's just like, go, 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 or maybe in the West. Um, and so we never really give our time, ourselves time to, to stop and think about mm -hmm. things or how we might change things. And I think some of our, um, our change is also just brought on by kind of dragging it forward. Like no one was automatically, or really not, the majority of people were not automatically self-quarantining until um, until the governor like mandated that yeah you have to stay home now and as minimal as possible and like when he first said that I was reading through comments and there's a lot of people like oh, I don't like the government telling me what to do or how are they gonna enforce that or what's it gonna be and that and then it was just like yeah because everyone decided or like you know everyone's decided to do it but it's like yeah so we're all gonna do it and it's just like I think some of I don't know I feel like some change to be brought on has to kind of just be forced a little bit because I'm not sure because you know it, learning new things and going through all this has not been easy um, so it's like no one wants to change into something even if it could be better if it's 
going to be kind of uncomfortable and just unknown. You're like, well, I don't know if it's going to work, but I know how this works, even if it's right. not working well. <laughs> You're like, but I know how it doesn't work, so that's fine. <laughs> I think of uh, American society as really tolerating in some ways a lot of change, and I, I tend to think it has to do with the kind of people who came here mm. being willing to take a huge journey and come to a place that's very, you know, different um, from the other countries and continents. Um, but I mean, granted, there are certain ways in which American society possibly doesn't change a lot. Um, I tend to think though, like technology and things, we've kind of embraced that quite um, quickly. Yeah. I mean, it has been interesting how adaptable we really have been. I mean, I think, but I think, you know, I think, you know, with the push of this, because like we, we broke down our office like, you know, in a day and everybody was suddenly working at home, right? You know, and, and we did have that sort of that whole question like you know who could work at home and who can't and now we all can so <laughs> hey, <nice. laughs> yeah so I think we can be adaptable when we want to be and I think we are an adaptable people we just don't usually take advantage of that I guess unless we have to or unless we just want to yeah, that's sort of like the pushback with people saying, no, I don't want to do this. And even and even when this began, you know, I, I thought like, yeah, well, it's not that big a deal, right? And I don't know why everybody's getting so hepped up about it until I really explained it and said like, hey, you know, if you don't, if, you, if you're out in the world, you could be like, you know, infecting people um, that can't deal with it, you know, that, yeah. that don't have any protection and it's going to go really bad. And I think as soon as they really explained that, as soon as people really understood that, I think a lot more people got on board. And I think that's, I, I think that's been really lovely about this is that people really did respond to that and you know we, we really were starting to think about each other and like oh I get it you know we, we do have to do this so I mean that's I think was a real positive yeah I think being aware of our connections to others you know through the virus <laughs> yeah. and um, <laughs> And then that, you know, in the uh, meditation tradition that I'm in, um, they talk about interbeing, mm. that, you know, that there really is not the separation between us and other, what we think of as objects or other creatures that, that we have chosen to, to believe there is, I think. Mm -hmm. I am loving the flow of this discussion because we're going back and forth from the practical to the metaphysical a lot. And I'm noticing that we've kind of come full circle because we started out talking about um, just how things are changed and how we're adapting to it. And then I asked a question about our concept of ourselves. Uh, and when it comes to being a person through time, like who you were in the past and who you are now and who you intend to be and how that gives your life meaning. And then we started talking about time and now we're really talking about time in a bigger sense, like in how a society changes and um, how we adapt. And it sounds like all of these things are related and they're all very um, complex. Do you think that's true? Does that question make sense? <laughs> or I could put it another way and just say, um, let me think for a second. Uh, right now, I think we might be more aware of ourselves um, than we are um, than we usually are as beings in time because we're having a different relationship with time. We might be a, a more aware of ourselves as social beings because that relationship has changed. 
and um, we might be more aware of our obligations to society and society's obligations to us because there are questions like should I stay home? Is it safe to do this? Is it safe to do that? What precautions should I take when I go out? And then there are questions like, how much energy should I put into my child's education right now, both for my child's benefit and for the benefit of society? What does society owe us right now? So what should we be getting uh, in economically so that we can survive? And what kind of resources should we have to continue to educate our children? And I, I'm just wondering if like how all of those questions connect, like our sense of our being in time and our sense of our being in a community and in a society and um, not just being in time in the terms of our, the arc of our own lives, but as beings in history. Because this is definitely, I've heard um, things that you've all said and Liesl who had to leave early, about this being a, a, an historical time. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, I, I, I really appreciated getting to kind of talk about the experience with all of you, each, each of you. Um, and so I, I agree, I think that it has given, made us more aware of ourselves in time and in our local communities, because we've been, you know, it's not like, oh, I'm going to go there for this, and I'll go here for this, you know, you get all over the place like we tend to do. Um, even though we are going online in, in that sense to get yeah. other contacts. Um, and then, yeah, I think our individuality is, our connection to others is more important to us right now mm -hmm. than our personal, you know, individuality and, and ego. Yeah, I, th I think you could really say that right now is kind of this, um, we, we, we've really been pushed into an awareness that pushes us outside of our own like kind of internal thought process of just like thinking about ourselves um especially because i think especially for americans we have this very um just this pride and in, in pride in being individuals and having individual rights and in word like you know about ourselves and celebrating mm -hmm. that i think it's really highlighted um how interconnected we are mm -hmm. and how like inescapably interconnected we are and how we really do affect one another another's lives and how we live and and i think part of this is like highlighting that to I'm, I'm i'm hoping that it makes it more evident and prominent for us to like you know celebrate that and to um hold that in a like a higher space of of, of appreciation um, because I know that, that it's not all just been like, oh, you know, we're getting more aware and realizing things. There's been a lot of like opposing forces that have also been really, really bad right now. Um, and I, it's just one of those ones where I just don't want to completely ignore that where it's, yeah, there's been racism and people have been uh, panic buying and, and just, and the people who just aren't listening. <laughs> and I'm like, why, well, how is no one listening and being nicer? I know we're afraid, but, we could be polite. <laughs> and misinformation and yeah, all kinds of things. I, I'm just, I, I really appreciate everything that you've all said though, because, and your willingness to look at things philosophically, I think that's amazing. And I, you know, I do think that this is a time of, of more acute awareness for us because we're, when you change a habit, then you become more aware of, 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 of that habit. When you change your relationship to something, you become more aware of it. And so it's really interesting to me. And there's so much more that we can talk about. Like we could talk about the political and social aspects of this. We could talk about government and the media. Um, we could talk about our relationship to nature and the arts during this time and so many other things. And we only have a few minutes left. 
So mm -hmm. I, I want to say thank you so much. Again, I appreciate you all so much. And this really goes to show that philosophy discussions can be wonderful when it's just a few people. Mm -hmm. We have sometimes we have philosophy discussions that are this size, sometimes we have philosophy philosophy discussions that are 20 to 25 people. We've averaged in the beginning, we averaged about 15 people in our online discussions. And then that's dwindled over time. And I think that does have a little bit to do with our <laughs> changing relationship to time. Um, mm -hmm. But we will have these discussions every Monday in April and we'll be recording them for Longmont Public Media. And you can find information about that at greyhavensgroup.org. It's G-R-E-Y, havensgroup.org. And you can find it by clicking on events, or you can click on the um, drop-down menu under events, and you'll see COVID-19 discussions. And then you can also find information about it on our Facebook page, Grey Havens Philosophy. Again, G-R-E-Y, Havens Philosophy. Where the name comes from is a long story. Perhaps we'll tell you one day. Um, and we do welcome donations to support our work. You can go to greyhavensgroup.org slash contribute, or you can text the word THINK to 44321. That's really easy to remember. THINK to 44321. And we have some upcoming discussions. I've already mentioned our books and big ideas story times for preschool and early elementary students, caregivers are welcome to take part. That's 10 a.m. every Wednesday for 45 minutes. Uh, every Friday, we do Fandom Friday Philosophy. Say that five times fast. So this coming Friday is Dr. Hugh and Philosophy. We've done Star Trek. We've done Star Wars. We're going to do all kinds of things. And that's from 6 to 7.30 on Friday. And you can find information, again, at greyhavensgroup.org slash events or on our Facebook page. Uh, another COVID-19 discussion coming up on Monday. These are intergenerational. On April 16th, we do something called contemplative reading. So if contemplative or meditative practices are your thing, this is a way to apply sacred reading practices to contemporary texts. Alex is really involved in this, and you'll probably facilitate the next one. Yeah. <laughs> poetry and stuff that we do. Um, that's not all you do for our organization. You do a lot. But those are the things that I can think of. We're adding new discussions all the time. So I really hope that you all will take part in those things. And again, thank you so much. I've loved this. The time just flew by. And thank you for being willing to be recorded to Longmont Public Media. And thank you to Longmont Public Media. So any last thoughts before we wrap up? Anything you didn't get to say or questions you think that we should get to next time? I mean, I think it's, oh, go ahead, Rebecca. No, I was just going to say this, it's, that's what's nice about a small group is I feel like I got to speak <laughs> my mind. So thank you for, for really, sharing, for listening. Somebody just shouted hello downstairs. I think that's our housemate. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you. I've really enjoyed hearing everything that you had to say. And I hope you'll, you'll come again because we do have some that are small groups and we have some that are bigger, but we always try to listen to everybody. And I try to talk less, but sometimes I don't do such a good job. So any other last thoughts? Just, it's really interesting living through it in a historical event. And sometimes I find it almost like just super exciting. Um, and then I'm like, oh, I don't wanna do the reality of this. And I don't want everyone else to have to deal with the reality of this. So I'm enjoying discussing it. <laughs> you know, that's so interesting that you said, um, I can never stop talking about these things, philosophy, I love to talk, but we have a couple minutes. So interesting that you said that it's sort of exciting because I keep thinking of something that I think is from the bell jar, um, Sylvia Plath, where she talked about um, something terrible happening, I can't remember, and said that there was a little bit of a thrill to it, like when you wake up and the world is covered in snow and you didn't know that it was going to snow overnight and you, you wake up and it's like the whole world is upside down. And I, I'm feeling that way too. Like there's a sense of wonder about this to me. And that does not in any way take away my concern or my compassion for people who are suffering. And I know that this is hitting vulnerable populations harder. Um, and, and that's something that I'm very concerned about. 
but I do appreciate the ways that it's bringing us together. And I really appreciated the way that it brought this quality group of women together tonight. So thank you again. Thank you very, very, very much. And I hope we um, hear from you soon. And you can also reach me at info at gray havensgroup.org, G-R-E-Y, <laughs> havensgroup.org, if you have ideas for other discussions. And I just can't wait to see you all again. So have a great evening. Thank you for sharing and moderating. Oh, thank you. Okay, I am going to stop recording now, and then I'll